We'd like to welcome you back to part four of our current event and weekly Bible study for May 29, 2017. This was actually the clip I was going to play at the start of the last um, <clears throat> uh, I was going to play it in the last teaching. But then I ended up finding the other clip that I couldn't find, and this is the one that Alex Jones just put out. Now, again, the reason I'm playing this is to show you this is a great example of, I mean, just the one that I played, I could not find. I mean, literally right on his website, top story, you click in it, the video is private. And then it says, log in or whatever. You know, and it's like, okay, you try to log, it won't even let you log in. To even view it on that particular link i found it in another place on youtube so i know what's happening to them is real it's not like it's made up it's not like oh this is some hoax jones has put out it's real look at what they're doing to sean hannity there's a there's a good chance he might you know be gone as of this week as far as off fox i don't see how they can let him stay on there saying what he is saying uh, we know rupert murdoch's evil Okay, I, I've reported on that for years, and he's he's basically the owner. So, I just don't know how how his days couldn't be numbered there at this point. I don't know. I could be wrong. I hope I am. Again, things to pray about. But this is happening, and I wanted to give you um, examples of this because, you know... <laughs> This isn't going to stop. They, they've, like I said, they've pushed all their chips in, and I really believe they've, they view um, what the alternative media has done in the last year, especially with the whole Trump people getting a lot, a lot of people getting woke up and their, and their eyes opened regarding what a lot of the things that are going on in our corrupt government. Um, they do not want that awakening to happen. They want people to go back to sleep and. They're going to do anything they can do to make that happen. So let's go ahead and roll this one. The people of the United States, the people of the UK, the people of Europe and the world have a decision to make. Are we going to roll over to Islamic intimidation? Are we going to roll over to their censorship? Are we going to roll over to the past president that just left office saying don't use the word Islamic extremism or Islamic terror? We have been censored on our main Facebook page and also on Paul's page that have millions and millions of likes because Paul posted an article about how he's given all these death threats by Islamicists and Facebook won't take it down. They won't take down the pages with hundreds of thousands of likes saying kill Donald Trump. They'll only censor libertarians and conservatives and nationalists. So you could say kill, you know, Paul Watson... Alex Jones, Donald Trump, all day long on Facebook. No problemo. It's all good. Go for it. You say one thing against the sensibilities of these Muslim devils, and we have just documented in spades how evil they are, and there's no tolerance whatsoever, essentially, what we're dealing with here. This is how wicked and evil things have become. So this is what we're talking about because we're telling the truth and our messages are strong but we won't be censored by you we won't be shut down by you and then today they locked out our facebook account that's why we're not doing facebook mentions because that's been taken from us because we violated community guidelines pointing out that the leftists are saying just carry on have a stiff upper lip go have peace vigils with the muslims as if that's going to stop the islamic attacks when it's the governments themselves and the left that brought in these people and let them carry out the attacks, and then cover up for them every single time. Which is what we just documented, how they are bringing them in actively on these pontoon boats, ferried onto the NGO boats, ferried probably, you know, right into, into Italy. And it's all totally documented, it's all totally provable now. I mean, even down to the GPS of the boats going back and forth between Libya and Italy. And yet, we can't say anything about it. You know, they could do all this nefarious evil right in broad daylight, and we have no right to even talk about it because that's hate speech. The people are sick of this, and they're tired of it. But let me tell you something. I'm a lot more mad at the globalists and the social engineers and the UN population system, the whole UN refugee program, than I am at the Islamists. The globalists go destabilize the Muslim countries. They destroy their borders. They then open up Europe. They have the, the, these people flood into their countries. And then they're 
basically prepped by leftists to then go out and carry out their jihad to intimidate the general population into giving up their rights to the central government, police state, to protect them. That's all this is. The real enemies here are the globalist social engineers that have been protecting radical Orthodox Islam and turning it loose all over Africa, all over Asia, all over the Middle East, all over Central Asia to wreak havoc against non-radical Muslim countries like Iraq and like Syria and like Libya and like Egypt. It goes on and on, and it's disgusting to see they've written books bragging how they use Islam as the sword of globalism and how they're supposed to come here and colonize us Millions and millions of military-age men, and, 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 and our Western men are... I mean, already said, using, they brag in their books how they, they're, they were going to use Islam as the sword of globalism. It's exactly what they're doing. It's the sword that they're going to try to use to bring the world to its knees to beg for the new world order. Because they know the kind of chaos and havoc and evil these savages will create wherever they're allowed to roam and, you know, have freedom. They're taught to be cucked and passive and roll over, but the Muslim men can just run around and beat up and attack and rape and kill. And the liberals go give them roses when they do it in Stockholm and in, and in, and in Berlin. And they have anti-racism, pro-Islam uh, rock concerts, and the Muslim men just line up and just rape the women as they beg the police for help for hours on video, and no one helps them because it's a sacrament to give into Islam. It's a sacrament Absolutely. per British town. In some cases, thousands of little... They're, they're getting raped in mass. The women that would be stupid enough to go out into the streets at night in a lot of these German towns and, and elsewhere. And there's no there's no news coverage. All of it's covered. We, I'm not even... Well, the point I'm trying to make is I'm not even telling you a fraction of what's actually going on. This is, this is only what we're getting leaked out from... The, either the lamestream media or what we're actually able to find out by like what Paul Joseph Watson was able to find out with these NGOs, how they're ferrying them back and forth. I'm not telling you a fraction of what's really going on actually over there and all the cover up because remember the mainstream media over there, just like over here is complicit in the cover up and they're complicit in the whole politically correct. Don't say anything against Islam, cover up all the mass rapes that are going on cover up i mean what do you expect when you bring in savages of, of military fighting age that have no regard for women and literally view them as dogs and infidels and turn them loose on the population what do you think they're going to do to the females and the children only only god knows what's going on there and it's going to get no news coverage or very very minimal unless somebody screams loud enough and they're in the right spot to actually but no no it's not part of the narrative only God knows the point I'm trying to make is what's really going on over there. It's far worse than what I'm, I'm actually telling you. Girls grabbed and put into sex slavery who disappear, who some cases are found dug up dead. But it's all kept quiet because uh, 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 it's Muslims and it's brown people and, and they can't do anything wrong. That's what this has become. And then Katy Perry comes out of her rat hole and says, no borders, no division, we will all come together, when she has bodyguards, and she's all protected, and these rich white liberals live in the most segregated white areas in the world. They are conquering everyone with their Islamic sword. Yep. Morrissey, a big liberal, but a classic liberal, came out and said, how dare you all you live behind armed guards, just say have some vigil, and you know, move forward, and put smiley face avatars up, or put you know, British flags up. Union Jacks. No, that's all just a salve by the very political elite that brought these people in, knowing they come from third world hellholes where all they do is kill each other. They're incompatible in their own damn religion. So ladies and gentlemen, on this Wednesday, under Sorry about that. Understand this. They think you're broken. They think you're defeated. They think they can bring in millions of military-age men, have them rape, kill, bomb, do whatever they want, see our president go to the heart of Islam and say, no more Islamic terror. We're throwing down the gauntlet. They bomb the next day, showing just how absolutely arrogant they are and how they believe the whole world's theirs. Because so I think he's in reference to the Ariana Grande uh, bombing when he said, I guess Trump said that. I didn't follow everything. You know, He did some things over there that I did not like regarding Islam as far as capitulation of th certain things. Um, and then he also did some things that are good. So again, it's, it's been a real mixed bag with Trump, uh, especially as of late. 
and and that's why again i'm not i am like just trying to maintain neutrality here I, I'm, I'm gonna give him credit for the good and I'm, I'm gonna point out the bad as well um but yeah it looks it looks like that might have been a one of those gauntlet throw oh yeah really trump we're gonna throw down the gauntlet here and we're gonna we're gonna show you and we're gonna we're gonna blow up all these little girls at an ariana grande concert and and wow I'm telling you, I mean, you got to be really, really brave and really, really courageous to go into a, a little teeny bopper um, concert and go there and get in the middle of a whole bunch of little girls in, in I, what did he detonate himself? I don't know if he had suicide or whatever, and blow them all up. Um, I'll tell you, you're a real man, dude. Of course, I imagine that you're finding that out. You found that out real quick when you plunged into hell and you realized the mess that you were in that you will never ever get out of you devil we act like such cupped cowards because we act like such pathetic people that will roll over to the so-called religion of peace that is the religion of oppressing women and the religion of absolutely trafficking in slaves they invented the african slave trade and then taught westerners how to do it so they teach in schools that the west did it when the west ended it everything is a giant inverted stinking fraud and i for one have had enough of it and I look at uh, the Grande lady who, who, where this event happened, calling for open borders, saying Trump's a terrorist, saying he, he terrifies her, and then she's not saying a word against ISIS or Islam right now, when they just blew up 22 of her fans and killed them with their guts and skin blown everywhere. Oh, but if I say that, I'll be banned. But you know what she did say? After the red carpet appearance the other day at whatever, I don't know, whatever garbage festival she was at where she was dressed like a total whore bag, looked like she should have been out on a street corner hooking, um, you know, for uh, turning a trick or whatever. She comes out and, and after she gets off the red carpet, I guess she didn't like what some of the people were saying there, maybe in reference to this concert and her maybe lack of reaction. And as soon as she got in the elevator, she said, I hope my fans all effing die. End of quote. That was her. See, that's the strongest reaction we've been able to get from this maggot of a devil. Okay, Not a word against Islam, though. But she hopes all of her fans die. So, this is the type of people like Katy Perry and Lady Gagme and, 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 and Ariana um, Grande that we're dealing with here. We're dealing with, just like Islam, pure vessels of satan just of another ilk you know just of another ilk off youtube you can't even talk about the victim's death and their blood if they want to show us people that have been nerve gassed to start a syrian war gulping for air that's okay up close but if i just say they blew up these little girls and humanize them will be banned probably already off facebook because you see you don't humanize it the other thing we got blocked on facebook for our accounts frozen for videos live feeds, is that we did humanize them and said the little girls were blown into pieces and that that won't bring them back saying, let's carry on stiff upper lip. No, let's stand up against the radical Islam. Let's stand up to the open borders. Let's stand up to the EU saying you'll let these people in or we'll fine you 100,000 pounds per person you don't let in. So, I mean, 100,000 pounds per person. So not only are they bringing them in, not only are they ferrying them in, but then they're imposing all of these unbelievable fines if you don't let them in this is the absolute concerted plot underway and this is why i think they're so infuriated hillary didn't get in because if hillary would have got in she would have just it would have been exactly like she was going to i think i believe double the input of the muslim refugees that even the muslim barack obama because this is all going this isn't going down the Muslims, they want to bring in more. It's, it's never going to be enough until these nations are totally ruined, lock, stock, and barrel. That, it's, that's the only option. So this threw a major monkey wrench into that plan alone. That's just one of the plans that it threw a monkey wrench into. The, 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 the Muslim plan. And I know that there, there has been a decrease in that, and then I told you about the El Salvadorian MS-13. I mean, those are some of the biggest scum on the planet. And the, and the influxes and how, you know, El Salvador is complaining about how it's affecting their country. Really? They're your devils. They're your problem. You deal with it. 
How dare you? They're here illegally anyway. How dare you complain to us that people that are of your nationality, that your country essentially created, and you're going to complain to us that you can't handle the influx of your MS-13 gang members. I'll tell you, that's one of the most wicked countries on the planet. I've seen enough documentaries on that. And I mean, you talk about a hellhole. I'm sorry, but it is horrible. Horrible. And, you know, but evidently, we need to do our fair share and take in all the worst of the worst of all the different countries so that we're suffering like they're suffering, evidently. Evidently, that's the solution they expect from us. Think about that. Think about that. Think about how crazy they are. Think about how arrogant they are. Think about the mayor who said, just get used to terrorism last year in London. The London stand new mayor, the Islamicist. He said he's proud of Islam and it's spread. He's not an Uncle Tom. He's here to let Islam take over. He hasn't repudiated ISIS or Al-Qaeda or any of it. He hasn't because you know what? He's the big politico that uses the terror to get more of your freedoms and more of your rights and more surveillance. In fact, they've got the British police everywhere cracking down on folks that even mildly criticize Islam or say it's time to stand up against it because we're all being basically turned into slaves and Islam is being used as the weapon to put us into slavery and we're not putting up with it anymore and we see through the globalist operation. I, I've said this for, for years now in the, and way before Jones was, way before Jones, way before a lot of other ministries and I, I'm, not, I'm not here to pat myself on the back. I'm telling you, like I'll show I said, I'm not bragging. You know, but I know every star in Hollywood, and these are vapid people, and I'm not. I'm, I'm not a narcissist. Anyway, sorry. Um, no, um, I have been saying this for years. You go back when I first started doing teachings on Islam, which was probably all the way back near the start of my ministry, that this is going to be one of the main ways, if left unchecked, that the New World Order will bring the world into subjection. And now everything that I have been saying all these years is coming to pass, it just seemed too obvious to me, I guess. Looking at their agenda and looking at how they were getting a free pass. I'm like, oh, I can see Satan really using this to his advantage if left unchecked. They've got to implement, they've got to implement the New World Order, order out of chaos, and this is going to be the main way they implement chaos. You know? And and we haven't even seen anything yet. Like I said, there's a lot of a lot of ways they could trigger a lot of different events to both activate them and a lot of other factions of wickedness in the world that would further compound all the things going on in islam uh, and the more these devils that, that that get into your country wherever you live you know the, the more satanic forces you have to contend with it is so incredible to see their arrogance and to see even after that her fans were blown up 50 plus injured 22 dead that she won't even sit there and repudiate Islam. It's more attacking the West, saying we didn't surrender to Islam enough, we didn't cut off enough women's genitals, we didn't put enough hoods over women's heads, we didn't we didn't sit there and throw enough gay people off buildings. Seriously, that's the cuckold Stockholm Syndrome. We didn't go to enough Islamic, you know, uh, rock concerts and be raped to prove, you know, that Swedish women are sorry for being white. We didn't do enough, and so we're so sorry to George Soros, who runs the UN. Uh, migrant council program uh, with all these different globalist organizations and who literally has taxis out in North Africa from Libya bringing the jihadis over by the thousands every day. I mean, you cannot make this level of crap up. But then Morrissey comes out and tells the truth. So this is about survival. Do you have any survival instinct left? Let's look at some of these articles. Here it is. Facebook uh, punished me for complaining about the death threat. That's the one thing that Paul's been blocked out of his account for. You can also scroll down here and see the other thing about the girls being killed, where we just mentioned they were killed and saying, you know, all your peace vigils won't bring them back. Time to stand up. Because that's such truth, I'm not allowed to say it, you see. Uh, continue. He means the girls that were killed at the Ariana Grande comes the little girls that were blown up. But you can't, you can't mention that on Facebook because, you know, it's insensitive to the Muslims. And here uh, we've got uh, the fact that... Uh, the Muslim terrorists kill innocent, young, beautiful girls, but that's okay. White House blames exhaustion for Donald Trump's Islamic terrorism dog whistle because he wasn't supposed to say that, but he did say it's Islamic terror. So the media had both. They said, oh, he was tired when he said it, but also he, he never said it. Oh, he backed off in Saudi Arabia. 
see it again. That's their total double fake mind control. Remember the San Bernardino attack? They don't call it an Islamic terror attack. They, they just call it an attack. They went and shot people around the Christmas tree, asked if they were Jewish, and shot them. Nice attack. What we know about the Bastille Day killings. Oh, not an Islamic attack, huh? On and on. That's the BBC. Orlando shooting, 49 killed. Shooter pledged allegiance to ISIS. At least CNN weeks later finally got that straight. It's all up on Infowars.com right now, ladies and gentlemen, breaking this down. Morrissey rips British politicians after Manchester attack. Petrified to admit Islamic extremism behind terror. There is anger is monumental. For what reason will this ever stop? And he goes in to talk about why is the left so allied with Islam? You're never going to be able to shut us down. And look at this. Katy Perry with all her bodyguards and all the rest of it says, no barriers, no borders. We all just need to coexist. Hey, Katy. Can you go to Saudi Arabia and walk around in your Egyptian outfit? No, you'll be put in a slave pit. Katie, can you walk around kissing girls in Saudi Arabia? No, you'll be executed. Can your gay dancers go around in Saudi Arabia? No, they'll be thrown off cliffs. They'll be thrown off the top of buildings. Hey, K Katie, can you go to Syria and live in peace? Can you go to Libya and live in peace? No, because our government went and put radical Muslims in to sell women into slavery and murder hundreds of thousands of Christians. But that's okay, because you shoot your mouth off about no barriers when you've got a big wall around your mansion, and you've got at least seven or eight bodyguards. I've seen you out in Austin before who pack guns, but of course you don't support the Second Amendment either, only for your big fat... Oh, okay, sorry. He's going to start cussing there. I got it just in time. Sorry. Um, anyway, yeah. So I understand why he's mad, though. I mean, it, it's, I, <laughs> doing the, these reports on Islam they are the hardest reports for me as far as just not coming unglued. I'll be honest. The Bible says, be ye angry and sin not. I mean, this is, you know, some of the most egregious stuff going on on the planet right now. And it's ground zero Islam. And then tied in with the whole pedophilic angle. And how the pedophiles are the ones that are actually... If you think about it, because these globalists, who are the pedophiles, who do sacrifice the children, who do drink their blood, who do rape them, who do kill them, use them in snuff films, and then sell their organs off after they've harvested the organs after the snuff films. Um, these globalists are the ones that are bringing in the pedophilic, raping devil muslim men of fighting age so they're all on the same team it's called team satan okay they're all on the big same team and they all i think they have a i, I kind of think that there's a mutual admiration there i'm kind of an admiration from afar you know um i feel like the globalists are like man i can't wait till we can actually just go around and do that in the streets like they're doing like open you know killing and purging of humanity in the streets like islam's already doing just under the but they can get away with it because of the whole religious angle and the protections that afford them evidently because of the whole politically correct angle you know but we're dealing with the most vile sects of humanity that are working hand in glove through satan in order to implement their agenda Next report, routine arrest of arguing Muslims leads Minnesota police to a huge weapons cache and bomb-making devices. So we'll see if they're cracking down in Minnesota about Muslim terrorists who have huge weapon caches and bomb-making devices. You'd think that would make national news. Did you hear about this? Not me. This was a local news report, basically. Um, it's a blockbuster news story wrapped in a nonchalant minor league reportage. Of course it is, because we want to minor on major and major on minors. That's what we want to do. Again, wouldn't this have got like a ton of coverage, you would have thought, considering all the Islamic terror attacks going on over in Europe and elsewhere in the world? No, no. It didn't even make it out of the, the local, you know local news coverage. It wasn't really anything worth whatever, evidently. Two Muslims, Abdullah al-Rafi, 27, and another you know two guys of fighting age their brothers evidently and majid al-rafi 26 both of minneapolis which is a muslim stronghold were arrested with a huge cache of weapons cache of weapons according to the police both men gave their address as a nearby public housing building they live in public housing of course on the taxpayer's dime jizra remember what i said before jizra 
the tax, the infidels pay. So they view, instead of like, now it'll eventually get to the point where they take over if, if it's allowed to continue. Like let's say it's allowed to, well, no, let's just say where it is allowed. Uh, where it's like law. Let's say in Syria, under Muslim control, if they would even tolerate Christians there, it would only be through Jizra, and you would have to pay them money, taxes, every, I don't know, week to month or whatever their payment schedule is. It's like the mafia. Um, and just in order to live, okay? That's how they view it, because we're infidel dogs, and, it, and, and we're so privileged to have them on our soil. So they have no 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 problem milking the taxpayer system, and, and and our government is all too more than willing to give them whatever they want anyway. Just like the illegal aliens, except these devils are a whole other level than than, than the, just the illegal aliens coming from Mexico and um, Central America, unless they're like MS-13, which you know they're pure evil. Both jihadis had a criminal history. Okay. Abdullah has a prior conviction for the same offense, carrying or possessing a pistol in a public in public without a permit so you would have thought maybe he would have been deported no he's no problem a little slap on the hand maybe um i don't know maybe they'll take away his juice boxes for a week his right to rape american women for a week i don't know he has also been convicted of receiving stolen property both men are listed as having numerous arrests not only in minnesota but also in texas so no problem there. They got no, they got no priors. They're good guys, good upstanding um, Muslims that don't have any hidden agenda. Who are these jihadis? Both these devils have been convicted of gun-related crimes before. Were they ever investigated? Doesn't look like it. What mosque did these Muslims belong to? Who knows? What were they planning on attacking? Who knows? Well, of course, we'll probably find out soon enough. How many others are involved? Uh, no, nobody knows. Who cares? Whatever. These are questions the Star Tribune didn't think to ask or cover. The lack of coverage in the actual news about the thwarted attack is deeply disturbing. Now, note in in when where I'm actually going to read part of the um, the report here from the from this uh, rag that reported on it. Note the supremacist attitude of these Muslims when approached by police. I mean, the, I tell you, <laughs> you know, and this is why. God hates pride so much. And pride is a gigantic basis for Islam. Because they truly believe that we are all infidel dogs. That any, any non-believer in Islam and that we're you know, just privileged to have them in our presence. And they're, they're so blinded by that Islamic pride that they just feel like they can go and do and rape and kill and pillage and do whatever they want. Because it's their birthright as, as a Muslim, evidently. So this is from the Star Tribune, May 15th of this year. Uh, routine arrest leads to Minneapolis police to arsenal. Minneapolis police uncovered a arsenal of guns and bomb-making devices during a... I, like I said, these devils have been preparing for jihad for decades. I don't think any of us even has a comprehension what kind of caches of weapons and bombs are actually in probably Islamically, Islamic houses. Remember, 75% of the so-called moderates are there to shield, protect, fund, and breed for the jihadis. Don't you think they've got all kind of hollowed out places in their houses, just like they do over in the Middle East, where they're storing these things for that when they finally get the green light for jihad? So what, what, if if... Let's say if a mosque, a radical mosque, gets raided, or if one of these housing complexes where all these radicals may be overtly living get raided, well, we don't got anything. We're good. Now, they got caught with stuff, sure. But I'm saying the majority. Think about if you were Satan. Wouldn't that be the way you would handle things? Wouldn't you use them as cover? The, the so-called moderates? That's why I refuse to give them a pass. According to a man, uh, according to police, a man walked by a parked car in North Minnesota at about 5 p.m. Thursday and confronted the people inside 
after they threw food wrappers on the ground. So these, they're just pig savages and they just throw their trash everywhere because we're infidel dogs. They're, 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 they literally are the most disrespectful on, on every level you could possibly imagine. It's like infidel dog, you clean it up. We rape your wife, you deal with it. We do whatever we want. I mean, you look at the trash and, and all the garbage they leave behind in, in Europe, and it's just unbelievable. Anyway, so they ignored him until he paused to get the license number in the car. The men then got out of the car, indicated that they had guns, according to a criminal complaint filed on Monday. The man flagged down officers, the complaint says, but the men from inside the car continued to yell at him and resisted the officer's attempt to control the situation. Uh, they're, they're brazen. I'll give them that. They're, they're brazen. The men were insistent that they needed to be near the car because a drone was coming to deliver a package, the complaint said. Because of the suspicious circumstances and fear for the man's safety, the men were placed in a squad car while the officers searched their car. Inside, the officers found a hand grenade. Hey, come on. What damage could you possibly do with a hand grenade? Come on, they could have used that in some kind of suicide. They couldn't They couldn't wait until some church was packed out and walk in the front door, lob it into the, into, the, into the church, into the most seated section, pull the pin, lob it in there, run out. Nothing bad would happen. I'm sure, I mean, only probably, I don't know what, 10, 15 people get killed and then a whole bunch more maimed. That's all. Well, what, what, what harm is that? So they found a hand grenade, a handgun, assault, and when they could lob, okay, what about if they lob multiple hand grenades at once? What if they pull the pins on multiple ones, and then they open fire with their assault weapons in the church? How easy would that be to do in America? How simple would that be? They wait until the church service is going. You wait about 20 minutes in, or even better yet, wait until everybody's singing, so then that creates the noise so that you can create a diversion, and then they go in there and do that. I got a feeling that they've already worked all this, these logistics out when they finally go green on this. you know. And then all the 501c3 churches realize we made a really big mistake by yoking up with Islam. What do they call that? The, the <laughs> Chrislam. Chrislam. Yeah, the yoking of Islam and Christianity. When, and I'm not making that term up. It is a real term. There actually are denominations that have done this they've yoked up with this black devil death cult anyway yeah they found handgun assault rifles hand grenade magazines and a large quantity of ammunition the complaint said they also found cell phones computers and electronics equipment including drone parts uh, bomb squad personnel called to the scene noted that the large amount of ammunition and electronic devices could be used for bomb making the complaint said i'm sure none of it they all had honorable intentions and it was just a big mistake even despite their criminal record even despite the fact that they're islamic jihadis and all of the other things that have went on i'm sure everything's good so the abdul al-rafi 27 of minneapolis was charged with gross gross misdemeanor that's all he was charged with gross oh boy they really let him have it they really threw the book at him boy oh boy oh boy could you imagine if it was a white guy that did this i'm sorry but you know could you imagine that or a white christian a returning veteran or a pro-constitutionalist and i don't even mean a white guy that's like a kkk member i'm just talking about i'm just saying it, it's so disproportionate in the way that everything is viewed now hollywood frames pro-constitution pro-life christian all of these certain people as pure evil and people like the devil muslims are given total free pass it's just unbelievable so he was charged with a gross misdemeanor they really they again they really threw the book at him boy for carrying a pistol in public without a permit oh i guess they're not going to do anything about the bomb making devices or the hand grenade you can't have a hand grenade in december he was convicted of the same offense oh well i'm glad he's off the streets i'm glad he hasn't done it 14 other times i'm glad he's learning his lesson i'm glad he's repented it's great 
It could not be determined whether the FBI or another federal agency is investigating. Oh, probably not. Nah. Whatever. Do you understand this is one story and this is going on, I guarantee you, all over the country, just like Europe, and they just let these people go? Like I said, I'm only giving you a small fraction of what's really going on. The reality is so much worse that probably none of us can even comprehend it. Next report. Mosque takes over Pentecostal church in my state, North Carolina. As pastor prays to Allah in open service. Isn't that wonderful? This will guarantee, this report will warm the cockles of your heart. I guarantee it. Editors note, what does the compromised Laodicean church look like in these days? It looks like this. Local pastors in North Carolina not only helped the mosque to take over a church building. Yeah. But they also participated in the opening service in a prayer room to the moon god Allah. Isn't that wonderful? Do you think these pastors took a moment to tell their new Muslim neighbors that without being born again by faith in Jesus Christ alone, they would burn for an, an eternity in a place called hell? No, that would be hate speech. It's open faith and we're all brothers. Ali Muhammad, an organizer of the mosque, tells the North Carolina's News and Observer, and I said, you liar, you fork-tongued liar. The Quran describes Allah as the best deceiver there is. Straight from there, straight from the Quran. A liar who is not above using the same evil and wicked schemes of his, of his opponents and encourages his followers to do the same. Remember, they're in phase one here for the most part. They're just trying to establish that demonic toehold, then do a foothold, then get the whole camel in the tent. They're going to play real nice in phase one. And you're going to have these devil liar Muslim imams saying, it's open faith and we're all brothers. These Muslims are stripping the church of its Christian roots, including removing the crosses and handing them over to pastors in the area. When they open, I'm surprised they didn't burn everything up back. When they open on Saturday, the Christian clergy, including Pastor Jim Melnick, I like to shake old Jim Boy's hand, boy. I tell you, he's a man of God. I'll tell you, he is Pastor Jim Melnick of Saint Paul's Episcopal Church. He's got a backbone like a redwood. This one, this Jim Melnick. I'll tell you. Let me tell you, he is on fire for God. I mean, on fire for Satan, I'm sorry. He participated in the ceremony. Other pastors from the Methodist and Baptist congregations were also present. Baptist and Methodist. We're talking hardcore. Right down the line, Bible believers here. Okay? Yoking up with Islam. Helping them purge this christian church and install a muslim church in their local community they're doing god's service right especially based on everything we just covered i see it and melnick says good old pastor melnick says i see it as an important statement of the community that we take each other's faith seriously oh i take their faith real seriously i seriously expose it every chance i get and i make no apologies for it praise the lord jesus christ and i have to die for that then then so be it whatever I'd rather die with my boots on, die as a man, and die with courage than capitulate to this garbage and lay down to these devils and not expose them to my dying breath. And if I have to die for it, whatever. Whatever. Absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Other pastors from the Methodist and Baptist Congress, other pastors, plural, can you imagine the geldedness, the spinelessness that a pastor would have to have to go and participate in this abomination of yoking up Christian denominations with pure, absolute paganism, moon god worship, a la death cult? Can you imagine? I, I, and I don't want to here they plead ignorance they don't i don't want to hear it i don't want to hear it you're willingly ignorant you devils you will all burn in hell pastors 
if you do not repent of this wickedness. And I hope you do. I really do. And I'm not saying that because I think I'm Mr. Super Christian. I'm telling you, if I was in your shoes and I was doing what you're doing, I would burn in hell too. You cannot bow the knee to Baal and bow the knee to God. That's what the Bible says. It's very, very clear. And when you go and you go to a worship service and you kick a Christian church out of there, and you celebrate that, and you go and you worship with the Muslims, and you pray to Allah, the moon god, you are bowing the knee to Baal. And you can't do both. You can't have it both ways. A tree is known by its fruit. This is how pathetic, in a, in a general sense, the 501c3 corporate Christian pseudo-Laodicean church of Revelation chapter 3 has become. This is the state that we're in, in America, where this happens. I mean, I, I can't even, this so blows my mind, I can't even comprehend what I'm reading you. This makes me more mad than anything I've read you so far. Oh, my. So let me just read the last nine from good old good old Pastor Melnick here. Backbone like, backbone like a redwood, remember that. I see it as an important statement of the community that we take each other's face seriously. I want to acknowledge how important it is to build bridges in the community that we're living in, in a time that is so anxiety-ridden and there's so much mistrust going on in the world around us. This, this, Pat, this imam you just yoked up with, is <laughs> he is absolutely probably in a fetal position laughing at all you stupid pastors that would yoke up with him knowing what's coming to you knowing what islam has planned for you how you will eat those words in the future it's important when we can find common ground and share our community well, I would say to you, devil, pastor, Melnick, hear the word of God. Not me. What does the word of God say? Second Corinthians, and this is just one verse. This is just one set of verses. Second Corinthians 6, 14 through 17 says, Clearly, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, if Islam isn't the polar opposite of Christianity, I don't know what is. All you got to do is look at today's teaching and all the other ones I've done on it. You don't have to have the discernment of a dung beetle to know that it is absolutely the polar opposite of Christianity. And I don't mean to disparage dung beetles, but just saying. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? You couldn't get any more righteous than Islam. Can anybody argue that? What communion hath light with darkness? How could he get any darker than Islam? Just look at what we talked about today. And what concord, meaning agreement, what like contract almost, hath Christ with Belial or the devil? Well, if the devil doesn't dwell where Islam is, I don't know what the devil is then, <laughs> evidently. Or what part hath he that believeth, meaning a Christian, with an infidel? You couldn't get any more of an infidel than being a Muslim. There's, there's no, there, I don't know of any death cult on the planet that's more against God than Islam. Oh, yeah, you could say Satanism, I guess. Sure. But Satanism as a whole... As far as, they don't have the numbers that Islam has, is what I mean. Islam is like the largest religion in the world now, I think. Just surpassed that. They're, they're, they want to breed us out of existence. That's what their stated goal is. In what agreement have the temple of God with idols? Allah is an idol. He's a moon god. He's the moon god. You don't get in agreement with these types of people. You don't yoke up with them. You don't be good, great buddy, buddy. I'm not saying you don't witness to them. If God gives you the opportunity, 
but they're not people you want to yoke up with and be good, great buddy buddies with and, and participate in their religion with and pray to their moon god with. I mean, this is the height of insanity as a Christian. For ye are the temple of the living God, a Christian. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them the infidels, the idol worshippers, the people that have agreements with Belial, like Muslims, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Not yoke up with the unclean thing, and I will receive you. It's saying the exact opposite. But Mel, okay, going back to the report, but Melnick's participation is not just a gesture of neighborly compassion. Melnick says Christians, Jews, and Muslims are all people of the book, the Bible. And we all claim what the Hebrew scriptures call the Abrahamic faith. Sorry, totally wrong again. Totally wrong. The Jews, for the most part, number one, follow the Talmud and the Kabbalah and the Midrash over the, even the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. And they sure don't follow the New Testament. Sorry. Now, there's going to come a day when Israel corporately gets their eyes open and one-third of them will be saved. Two-thirds of them will die, though, according to Zechariah. Very clear regarding the end times. They're going to have their eyes open, they're going to look upon the one whom they pierced, and they're going to mourn for him as one that mourns for their only begotten son, and this is in clear reference to Jesus Christ. Those scriptures in Zechariah are in clear reference to the end times. And Jesus Christ, during the tribulation, when the Jews corporately, at least the one-third that are not killed, get their eyes opened. Muslims don't have any part of any of this. I'm not saying Muslims aren't going to get saved, but it's not going to be one-third of them. I can almost guarantee you that. And there, there is there is anti-Christ of a, of a death cult as you could possibly be we're not we're not all people of the book of the abrahamic faith melnick says we call it the old testament the muslims also claim the bible you fork-tongued devil from the pit of hell i wonder how many people you're going to be able to claim you got into hell pastor melnick because there's going to be a lot of blood on your hands in hell from what I can see, unless you repent. People pleasers, tickling people's ears. The Bible talks a lot about them. <sighs> Unbelievable. Here's the kicker. He says he personally worshipped Allah during the service. Good, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you made it official. I'm glad you're proud to proclaim that, you fork-tongued devil. May God rain down his fury on your wickedness and all your devil maggot ilk, pastor. I'm sick of playing around with these devils. They need to be judged. Judgment must begin at the house of the Lord. And I pray to God it happened tonight. I pray to God it start tonight. Because how many people are these devils taking to hell? How many? What's more merciful? For everybody to get their ears tickled and everybody to follow a Pied Piper devil like this straight into hell? The Bible says if the blind lead the blind, they'll both fall into a ditch. And that doesn't mean heaven. He's a blind devil. Of course, he just, he almost sounds to me like he's a willing tool and vessel of Satan. And he likes it. So I don't even know if I can give him the credit of being blind. I think he likes what he's doing. I think he, I think he wants to get people into hell. I'm not going to give him that much credit. I'm not going to give him a pass at all. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you know what? I look at a, free, a tree is known by its fruit. And look at this guy. Who does this? So yeah, this is uh, he worshipped Allah during the service. I'm sure, you, uh, you. I'm wondering if you'd done it before that. You went on the adopted demon program then, didn't you? You went out there. I wonder if you went out of, of that service, if that was the first time you'd done that. A changed man. 
little twinkle in your eye toward Allah now, thinking that, well, it's the same God of the Bible. Yeah, obviously, read the Quran. It's obviously the same God, obviously. Yeah, God tells us to go around and kill all those that don't believe in Christianity and behead them and slay them and subjugate their women and generally mutilate their children and rape little boys and stuff like that, yeah. No, obviously it doesn't, but, you know. Again, where's where's the discernment? I mean, we're not talking like you got to be a brain surgeon to figure this stuff out. And these are the pastors leading the flock? But see, a hireling, it says, pastor, who's not a real shepherd, has no true love for the sheep. But a true shepherd will lay down his life for the sheep. Jesus Christ being the ultimate example of that. But a true shepherd's going to warn the flock. A true shepherd's going to be a watchman. It's part of their job. He sees the wolf approaching, he's going to warn the flock, right? Right. He's going to try to get them, you know, safe. But you got to warn him to do it. This guy ain't going to do that. He's going to say, no, no, go right, go right into the wolf's mouth. His mouth is nice. It's nice and warm. Let him, let him put his mouth around your neck. Let him bite into it a little bit. He won't hurt you. He's good. These pastors are actively taking their congregation straight to hell and evidently having pleasure in it. Sounds like to me. Proud of themselves. Because they're breaking down barriers, evidently. We're all people of the book. All people of the Abrahamic, all these platitudes to justify their wicked, unbiblical, heretical actions. Then he goes on to say, obviously I'm a Christian. <laughs> oh, obviously, good old Pastor Melnick. You're obviously a Christian. Cemetery trained, born and bred. I mean seminary, I'm sorry. I'm sure that didn't ruin you any. Or start you on your merry way to your 501c3 corporate existence? Are you yoked up with the government? You capitulated from the moment you went into the cemetery. I mean seminary, I'm sorry. It all went downhill from there, I bet. If there was any love for God you ever had, I don't know, I mean, I don't know. Sounds like you've been a hireling from the start. Obviously I'm a Christian. I mean, who, who could question that? I would not live comfortably within the full teachings of Islam. Oh, why not? After all the glorious wonderment that we've just covered today, what is not Christian about what we just covered? I, I, I'm searching. I'm, I'm doing a mental Rolodex right now in my head, and I can't think of one thing that we covered today that wasn't 100% right down the line died in the wool christian anyway obviously i'm a christian i would not live comfortably within the full teachings of islam but i can recognize that we share teachings and recognize the call to treat one another mercifully yeah like islam treats our religion so mercifully all around the world spreading their love every day and not just christians but all the races their version of mercy is the most merciful version of mercy I've ever seen, Islam. I mean, can any of us argue that? The raping, the pillaging, the, the general mutilation, the deceit, the subterfuge, the wickedness, the filthiness, the plotting, the murders, the rapes. That's their version of mercy. As God, as the one God treats us mercifully. So we treat one another and as God treats us mercifully. And that translates equally into Christianity. As well it does Islam. And again, yeah, Islam is... I, I mean, yeah, I, I have to say... 
if this is the only teaching I'd ever done on Islam, I would have to say that Islam is the most merciful religion on the planet, ever. I, I don't think any of us can argue that today. I, I think I've stated my case, and I can probably just wrap up my ministry right now. Just This will be the last teaching I ever do. Because that, that point has so been emphatically made. I'm just kidding. Anyway, Melnick says, the, he said all that. This devil, this deluded, fork-tongued, demon-possessed devil from the pit of hell. This vessel of Satan. I'm sorry, I keep sugarcoating stuff so much. My comment, yes, and just harken back to all the mercy I just documented from just the last month alone about Muslims slaughtering Christians around the world mercil mercilessly. Yeah, but... Oh, Pastor Melnick is going to ignore all that because none of that applies, evidently. Next report. Muslims make sickening move to take over Senate floor with prayer. Proud veteran steps in immediately. Two Muslim men took over the Delaware Senate floor. There is video of this. This is not conjecture. This is not a rumor. This did happen. You can go watch the video. I'm not going to play the video because it's a little bit... Number one, I don't want to hear this devil's prayer on this Delaware Senate floor. And it's a little bit, the audio isn't the greatest, but it's, he's clearly doing, you can clearly hear him. And he's clearly like some kind of Muslim cleric. Two Muslim men took over the Delaware Senate floor this week to pray to Allah in an Islamic prayer. In a disturbing twist, many senators submitted to the Muslims by bowing their head in prayer as well. Well, that's, that happened at that uh, town meeting in uh, Florida, that video that I had played not too long ago where the Satanist came in, the pagan Satanist, and prayed to Lucifer. And, I don't know, two or three people left, but there was a whole bunch of other councilmen up there bowing their heads. This guy prays to Satan. <laughs> I'm not lying, he really did. Just look it up. But, I don't know, council meeting in Florida, prayer to Satan. I mean, hey, it's probably a lot of their religions anyway. Probably, well, finally, finally we get to pray to Satan. I mean... You know, I can at least do it honestly now, out in the open. Um, Senator Dave Lawson, a proud veteran, wasn't having any of it, however. Right-wing news reported that after the prayer was over, Lawson went to the Senate floor to slam his fellow senators for their poor example of courage and respect um, uh, for their country. He explained that these senators had bowed their heads in reverence for religion that has called for the demise of their country and for their people. He said, quote, we just heard from the Quran, which calls for our very demise. That's exactly, he's right, nailed it. I fought for this country not to be damned by someone that comes in here and prays to their God for our demise. I think it's despicable, Lawson said. This dude, I'd, I'd, I need, I'd love to shake his hand because, I mean, he, he nailed it. Unsurprisingly, Democratic Senator David, Democratic Senator David McBride spoke out to rebuke Lawson. For what he had said. Oh, the humanity. He says, I've never been of the mind to censure the, wor cens censure the words of other members, but I also have deep, I also believe deeply that words have consequences. Oh, oh no. McBride said, to criticize the sacred prayer of another religion from the floor of the Senate strikes me as antithetical. Antithetical, I'm sorry, to everything we ought to stand for as lawmakers. Oh, bravo. Golf clap supreme. Wonderful. You go, Satan. You go, you fork-tongued devil. Lawson refused to back down. He said their belief flies in the face of our Constitution. He fired back. This is not our Bible. This is, this is not our Bible, meaning the Quran they were reading from. We should not be allowing them to pray from that book in our house just as i do not believe i would be allowed to pray from my bible in their house wonderful point do you think that even in america they're gonna let our pastors go into mosques and present the gospel of jesus christ oh my word no 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 the other way around fine they want to bring all their devils and demons because that's what they're doing into your church they know they're getting a satanic foothold the moment you invite them into your church. It's like if you have a vampire at your front door. You gotta let him in. You have a black-eyed child at your front door, they always but they gotta have permission. It's no different than these devil Muslims. You grant them permission to come in, you have no idea what kind of spiritual baggage you just invited in. And I mean that from a spiritual level. Literally, I mean that. 
Um, let's go further. Female genital mutilation comes to America. I've been seeing more and more of these reports. These are coming out now, where this has been going on for actual decades. Muslim male and female doctors basically covertly generally mutilating little girls in America for decades. I mean, <laughs> this one, I tell you, I... <laughs> I have to kind of hold my, myself back. You do that to a little girl. You sick, sadistic devil from the pit of hell. May God rain down his fury on this wickedness. May he stomp it out and stop it and save every one of these little girls. And preserve them and protect them and that God's angels would encamp around about them all the days of their life and then he would get them out of this black devil death cult. Because if they're brought up in this, it's not their fault. That's all they've ever known. The, this is in Michigan. Muslim ER doctor arrested in Michigan. This actually did happen. How's it going, guys? We have a pretty disturbing article here. It surfaced a couple hours ago, April 13th. It says, Horrifying acts. Detroit ER physician charged with female genital mutilation. A Detroit emergency room physician has been charged with allegedly performing female genital mutilation on young girls, the Department of Justice announced Thursday. In a news release... This is in L L Livonia, Michigan, on girls 6 to 8 years old. And it has been confirmed. There's all kind of links under this to confirm this. This isn't, this isn't conjecture or whatever. Again, did you see this in the mainstream? No. They're going to suppress all this. This is going to be a local, this is like a local Fox News now. It's never going to get beyond local. They always suppress all this stuff because these devils are all in it together. The Department of Justice said Jumona Nagarwala of Northville, Michigan, allegedly performed the procedures out of a medical office in Liviona, Michigan, on girls who were six to eight years old. According to the complaint filed, two of the parents confirmed to investigators that they were aware of Nagarwala did the procedure, but others denied knowledge of the procedure and said it didn't happen. The news release said this is believed to be the first case under Law 18 U.S.C., which criminalizes female genital mutilation. Nargawal was arrested and is scheduled to appear in federal court in Detroit Thursday afternoon, according to the release. It was not immediately clear if Nargawal had an attorney. According to the complaint... The oh, I'm sure she's got an attorney. Uh, uh, <laughs> Probably the best one they, they can buy. And you probably won't hear another word about this ever again on the news. It was probably a mistake. It even got out. Despite her oath to care for her patients, Dr. Nargawala is alleged to have performed horrifying acts of brutality on most vulnerable victims. Acting Assistant Attorney General Kenneth A. Blanco of the Justice Department's Criminal Division said, the Department of Justice is committed to stopping female genital mutilation in this country and will use the full power of law to ensure that no girl suffers such physical and emotional abuse. A U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention report in 2012 found that roughly 513,000 women and girls in the U.S. were at risk of undergoing female genital mutilation which was more than three times higher than an earlier estimate based on a 1990 data. Oh, my word. So a CDC report in 2012 found that roughly 513,000 513, women and girls in the U.S. were at risk of undergoing female genital mutilation, which is more than three times higher than, oh. You have to understand, too, there's a huge demonic component with this. I really believe when they do stuff like this, just like when you go and get body piercings and tattoos, there's a huge demonic component that happens 
especially when you do it when they're a child, when they're most vulnerable and they're the most innocent. I just... This world is so wicked. I wish it wasn't the case. I really do. I've tried to fight it, and I understand that the Bible predicts this is all going to happen. It's just, this is so sad when you see it going on with children. I mean, it's a whole other level of outrage, I think, you, you run into here. Ugh. So there you have it. It is pretty terrible. I hope this does knock some sense in. And this sickening devil Muslim, they show a picture of her, and she, she tries to, this picture of herself, she tries to come off looking like she's this sickening, sweet, fake, phony Muslim that whatever, we're going to hit her fly, that's the impression you get, and <laughs> who knows how much wickedness she's done. But anybody who doesn't believe this is going on, you know, even if you don't believe in Pizzagate and James Alephantes, this should knock some sense into you. Although, if you just did a little bit of research, it wouldn't be too hard to figure it out. Well, again, in Pizzagate and James Alephantes, that, that's that's without question. Just just can Pizzagate in the keyword search. We, we prove that beyond, I believe, any shadow of the doubt on that one and it's just part of the big pedophile ring that exists in washington dc which is what they're trying so desperately to cover up right now and the reason that they have got to get trump and sessions out of there it, at least that's the way it appears all of the things that they're doing i just believe that is the main reason and it always seems to come back to this hurting children pedophilic issue here it's who satan uses the most you know, uh, for for his, um, I don't know, to accomplish his will on this planet. Next report, Islamic takeover increasing. American school surrenders to Sharia law. Here we're seeing a picture of, oh, seven little American girls. They're all little American children, meaning they're all Caucasian. I don't mean that you can't be black and be American. I mean, I'm just saying they look, they do not look like they're Muslims. Okay. They look like they're just normal. I don't know. Caucasian little girls. Okay. Um, seven of them. And it looks like there's some boys in the background with, I don't know if these are parents watching this. There's, it looks like there's parents filming this. Like this is some wonderful thing with some Muslim maggot cleric in front of this school and i'm assuming it's this public school in san diego with the with the parents proudly filming this um all getting ready to bow down and worship allah with some kind of islamic gigantic prayer rug laid out excuse me with all of this being filmed and, and being glorified and being justified in a public school system and it says islam does not mix with western society at all and yet liberals keep trying to force it on us and our children it's time to stand up and say not in my country the san diego unified school is now giving in to sharia law and muslim culture as a whole and again if it's going to happen anywhere it's going to happen in in california first typically this is from the san diego unified tribune straight from the horse's mouth they're not trying to deny this stuff just like all the stuff that we covered today can be verified Okay, in an attempt to stop the, quote, bullying of Muslim children, because that's such a gigantic problem, especially in light of all the stuff we've covered today. The school has implemented some non-traditional methods. Not only are these methods inappropriate, but they're also hypocritical and downright dangerous. The changes start off by adding all the Islamic holidays to the school calendar. The students are also expected to celebrate and respect these holidays which is just pure flat out paganism next the students are expected to learn more about the key islamic figures in history what like that pedophile muhammad that took his first and most favorite bride at six years old aisha but supposedly he didn't consummate the marriage till she was of the ripe old age of nine until he had sex with her defiled and i don't even believe that at all Pedophilia is the foundation of Islam, of their founder and leader. Why would their adherents be any different? Absolute sickening. They're also going to change the social studies 
courses to show important events that happen in the history of Islam. Safe spaces will be set up all around the campuses for Muslim students. Oh yeah, that's so important. The goal here is to fight so-called Islamophobia. The truth is, this is going to cause more problems than it's going to solve. Oh, that's not true at all. I don't believe any of that. All fooey. Letters are going to be sent out to staff and the family of students. The purpose of the letter is to let everyone know that this is going to happen. And that you're going to like it, basically. They're going to also provide additional information about Islamic culture. Oh, good. Because I want to be so socially enriched by them. I haven't I given you a history lesson today? Haven't we done that? Haven't I enlightened you to the wonders of Islamic culture that's all verifiable and documented, that's going on all around the globe on a daily basis? Why don't they enlighten them about that? Because that's the true face of Islam, right? Finally, they're going to punish children suspected of bullying Muslim students. I think, personally, any bullying of Muslim students, just take the kiddies out 30 days in the electric chair. Why? I mean, do, let, let there be a firm example here, okay? For the other kiddies, don't get out of line. Fall in line, be politically correct, don't ever say anything about Islam, just like they do over in Europe, and then it'll turn into a utopia just like it is in Europe. As long as we can get enough numbers over here and get them breeding us out of existence, what what's not to like about that scenario? Why can't we all just get along? You know? Like good old Katy Perry was to just unite I, I saw that interview she looked like she was just stoned out of her mind yeah i just love you yeah she was telling the the, the host i love you he's like i love you too oh yeah unite and hand me another quaalude and you know oh yeah i, I made up the quaalude part but she looked like she was definitely whacked out of her mind with her now her butched up um I look a like crew cut haircut blonde now she's a blonde so I guess she's went the whole Miley Cyrus thing now where she's got her hair all butched up and, and inverted the whole femininity thing because Satan always has to do that uh, for any of the supposed role models of girls in, in today's modern day age. Anyway, um, uh, let's see. Let's go forward here. Okay, they're also going to provide... Okay, finally they're going to punish children. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Suspected so of bullying Muslim students. However, the punishments are also extremely odd and Islamic centered. Detention is going to be a thing of the past. Now they're going to have to work with Muslim students and learn more about their culture. Oh. Essentially, their punishment for suspected bullying is to be brainwashed into accepting Sharia law. Because that's what this is all about. Getting all of us Sharia compliant. That's what they're going to do. It's alarming and extraordinarily inappropriate that these steps are going to take place. It is astonishing how hypocritical all of this is when compared to the actual religion of Islam. One of the major pillars of the Islamic culture is that you should kill the people who do not follow their religious teachings. How tolerant of them. How incredibly tolerant. It does not say you should politely teach them why it is good and a happy religion. It says kill them all. Yeah, didn't I just give you the verses? Specifically, the preferable ways behead them. Strike off their heads of the infidels. And then that other one, that other one was kind of neat too, where it says, you know, throw boiling whatever all over them and burn them and torture them that, that was a neat one too it was one of my favorites couple this factor with the way everyone is making muslims out to be victims of bullying just like that report i read you today all of these atrocities going on all over the world and we're gonna we're gonna focus in on this one event that happened in portland and the, how the bad bad white man killed two other white guys and almost killed a third as they were defending to when all of these other atrocities are going on all over the world that just part of it I documented today, but yet they're all for the most part ignored. None of that counts though. 
I'm not saying what that guy did was right. I would never advocate it. But do you understand the disproportionate reporting we're talking about here? It's not even close. Where? What about the? What about the mass genital mutilations that have evidently been going on in this country for years, to the tune of over five hundred thousand women and children? Have you heard about that? Is what kind of crime is that? That torture, in comparison. To, no, we we can't we can't talk about that. That's that's not politically correct. That's not real Islam. That's just figment of all of our imaginations even though it's part of their religion then it says that has to happen which is just so sickening and so evil and, and <sighs> oh, okay um muslims are just as likely if not more likely to bull, bully other students for not believing in the same religion oh yeah you think <laughs> that's all they do okay now, I'm not saying that's all they do when they're in the ultra minority, but if they get any kind of numbers, oh, you better believe it. They'll show their true colors in a heartbeat. Why are they being coddled like this? Well, we've went over that. Why? Because it's the main tool that Satan is using to destabilize the planet and to bring in the New World Order, Islam. It's the sword of the globalist, as Jones referred to. I couldn't agree. But see, that's not Jones saying that. That's the globalist saying that, that they were going to do that. They were going to use Islam in that regard basically to do their bidding. That is the tool they're going to use to usher in the New World Order. Islam. Or one of the main tools. What kind of world do we live in where all we have, where we all have to submit to the rule of Islam because if we don't, it might hurt someone's feelings. Yet they could do anything they want to us. Say anything, do anything, and we just have to take it. You never see any other religion put in the spotlight in this manner and given these types of uh, protection and, and, you know, favorable status. Why? Because it's Satan's nearest and dearest religion. So obviously it's going to get that type of, of um, protection. This special treatment where Islam is concerned could have a huge impact on the rest of our culture. Oh, you think? Nah. I don't believe that for a second. Just look at Europe's no different than it was 20 years ago. Sweden's no different. I mean, the women over there, you know, it's just the rape capital of the world and murder capital of whatever the world now, I think. And, you know, everybody lives in fear. And, you know, why would you say that? I mean, they've culturally enriched Sweden by itself and all the other European nations more than we could ever possibly imagine. Look at all the culture they've spread and all the love peace and joy and mercy mercy we got to get back to that mercy word because it's it's definitely applicable here because islam is all about mercy what do we what if we get to the point where we have to obey sharia law at our jobs because that's where it's all moving toward guarantee you that's where it's moving toward in europe again phase one phase two phase three it's just where they're at on the on that scale and again you could even break those down into like six different ones it's a little more complex than that i've got into the more complex like where you know like breaking it down into like okay they get to eight percent of the population then they do this they're very well organized they have a very very organized plan and plot and it's all totally pure evil and they're just in the background drooling waiting for the day when they can actually implement this stuff and guarantee you the moderates ain't going to be there to stop them or to help you out. <laughs> or what if we have to base Sharia law in our homes? We need to stop this kind of behavior in its tracks now. This PC culture is getting out of control. You think? Nah. I don't believe that for a sec. Here's the, um, is this the last, yeah, this is the last report. Somebody sent me this. Muslims demand locals in the UK don't walk dogs in public. Violation of Sharia and disrespects them. Mm hmm. Yep. Here's notices that the Muslims are putting out, and I, I don't know if they're putting these on people's doors or what, but it's the for public purity. Because, see, dogs and cats are all evil, okay? So, fluffy and scraps. Okay, your respective dog and cat, they're evil. 
because the Quran says so. Now, this is coming from a demon-possessed pedophile, again, that took his first bride, Aisha, at the age of six. His favorite. Okay? So, this pedophile is going to give me a morality lesson, and on all of you as well. Dogs and cats are evil, and when they go into areas, they will if they can, they will systematically exterminate all the dogs and cats. How does that make you feel? I mean, not to mention what they'll do to your daughters and sons and everyone else they can get their hands on. But I'm just saying, this is what they do. And they're putting these, these are, these are actual copies. They're not a copy, this is, this is a, a, a picture of the actual notices being sent out and it has a picture of a dog with a like a cross a circle around it with a cross for it like no dogs for public purity i'm going to read this to you the area this area is home to a large muslim community this is in the uk i don't know where in the uk please have respect for us and our children and limit the presence of dogs in the public sphere see these these maggots they'll, they're never satisfied they'll never get enough they will take and take and take until there's nothing more left to take. That's how Satan works. About us, who, who are the people putting this out? Well, keeping the purity of the public space enables the Muslims to remain untainted and without blemish. I know, because you're so puritanical and pure. With all the things that we mentioned today, we, we, gotta, make shit, we gotta make sure you maintain your purity. Because you're the most pure religion I've ever seen. And undefiled. Truly, you are. I don't think any of us could argue that after the, the, uh, the study that I just did today. As part of this effort, we have chosen to address one of the aspects that can have a detrimental effect on the purity of the public space. Mm. With the aspect being the presence of dogs who are considered impure in Islam. See, they, don't, they can't... They're not saying this about cats yet because cats are mostly indoors. And if they were outdoors, the Muslims would have killed them all anyway. You normally don't let your dog roam free outside. If a cat got outside, they, if they got it, they'd kill it. I really don't like devils that hurt animals. <laughs> and they got no problem with it. Which is amongst all of their many wonderful qualities, this is just yet one more. One more reason to love Islam and the, and the wonderful Muslims of the world. I'll tell you, they're, they're just salt of the earth. You can't get enough. Um, here's another, here's another um, flyer from them. Um, and from what I can read, it says, The Prophet has said, th this is serious, I'm not lying to you. And I don't know where this is in the Quran, because they don't give the Quran verse, but it says the prophet Muhammad basically has said, angels do not enter a house in which there is a dog or pitchers. <laughs> this, is how, this is how whacked out of their brains they are. Dogs or pitchers. Now, I would imagine that would apply to cats too. So you can't have any pitchers. Okay, that's off limits. And... No dog either, because no, dude, the only angels you're going to have in your house are fallen angels anyway. So maybe the fallen angels don't like the dogs or the pitchers, but I really can't see that being a barrier to a fallen angel, you know what I mean? I mean, let's just be honest here. Anyway, so as citizens of a multicultural nation, those who live in the UK must learn to understand and respect the legacy. No, I don't have to learn to respect anything. I'm going to expose you, as long as I can keep exposing you, you fork-tongued devils must learn don't tell me what i must do because i will not submit to you in any way shape or form must learn to understand and respect the legacy and lifestyle of the muslims who live alongside them no i really don't i really don't help us make this a reality let your local mp know how you feel about this i don't know if that's your local politician Make Muslims feel like they live in a safe and accepting... Oh, like you've done for the Christians and the other people around the world. You've made them feel all so warm and fuzzy and cuddly and so... Oh, I'm in a warm blanket of love with all these Muslims around me trying to kill me and slaughter me and rape my daughters and, and, and do all these wonderful things and kill my animals. You've, you've done that, and, and thank you for selling all of, the, all of the little girls into sex slavery and raping and mutilating their genitals and stuff like that. Because you've done that. 
you have welcoming them and respecting their beliefs. No, what you're trying to do is shove your stupid, dumb, maggot religion down my throat that's based literally from the satanic moon god Allah that has no basis in scripture, that is pure evil. And you're trying to impose that on me and shove that down my throat. Because evidently in this particular neighborhood, you've got enough numbers to do it. So I don't know what more I could do as far as a study to warn people about what's here and what's coming and what their plans are for down the road and how they will use this devil death cult in order to accomplish their will. I, I don't know what more I can say. I've done a lot of studies on this and, and this is probably one of the most powerful. Sorry, you might have heard my cat just meowing there. She wants to interject a little bit into the study. And I don't like people that hurt animals. <laughs> and I don't like people that hurt innocents and little children and do those types of things. And the witches that have tried to astral project here have found that out, that all born-again Christians aren't just going to lay down. And all born-again Christians aren't just going to lay down and fail to engage them. I cannot tell you how many witch covens have tried to kill me at this point. Okay, It doesn't mean that I'm whatever or I'm Mr. Big about It's the Lord. It's the Lord Jesus Christ and his holy angelic host and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And I won't take credit for any of it. But I do. the one thing I do have is the faith to believe that he can and will protect me and my family. And I want you to have that faith as well. And to understand that no matter what I've talked about today, God is bigger than all of this garbage and this wickedness and this evil. But I do believe that it's things that we need to pray about and to come against in prayer. Because, man, I'll tell you, if this isn't ground level for, for evil, I don't know what is. So I'll go ahead and close us out in, in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day and all that you've given us. I do thank you for letting us come together again, Lord, to, to explore these topics, Lord. And, and, and I'm almost shaken, Lord, because I'm so angry about what I've had to actually report upon today. I just pray, Lord God, that you intervene in the lives of all of these people and Christians around the world, Lord God, that are under the sword and under the threat of Islam. All of the, and, and, and the little girls in Islam, Lord, and, and the people that want to come out of this death cult. I can't imagine, Lord God, what it would be like to be caught in this and feel like there's no way out. And there's got to be a lot of people that feel that way in Islam. I just pray, Lord God, you, you help them. I pray to God you save them, you bring them out. I pray to God those that can be saved within Islam that their souls be saved. For it will that not one would perish, but that all would come to repentance. And that the ones that will not relent and that are just bent on evil, Lord God, that Lord, <laughs> whatever it takes, Lord God, I just pray to God they do not prosper in wickedness. I pray to God you rain down your fury on their wickedness and they are not able to deceive the masses and, and pull off what they're trying to pull off. I, I pray to God you wake up the Christian remnant to this matter, and not just this matter, Lord, but to all the ways that the New World Order is trying to implement and, 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 and infiltrate and deceive the masses and the Christians. And wake up the Laodicean 501c3 church, Lord God, Wake up the pastors. I pray for your fear to be upon us collectively because I think we need, we don't have fear of God uh, collectively as Christians. And, 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 and therefore, we're deceived and deluded to a large extent, Christianity in general, Lord. I, and Lord, I'm not saying I'm perfect either. I'm not, I'm not, and that I'm not deceived on, on levels and, and that I've been good enough uh, re regarding these matters, Lord. So I'm not asking for something, Lord, that I'm not asking for myself. But I pray, Lord God, for your divine intervention regarding these matters and that you would not let wickedness prosper. And that this evil of Islam would be exposed 
and defeated and destroyed and annihilated. And all these pedophiles, God, in high government that are, that are implementing this and enabling this and bringing this over. Like the Clintons and the Obamas and the Merkels and the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and all the Illuminati, God. I pray to God you go right to the source, God. Go to right to where Satan's highest minions are and, 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 and you loose your warring and your death angels if necessary, God, against them in the name of Jesus Christ. And that they be annihilated, that all men would see and fear and declare the work of God, that they would wisely consider of your doing, and that the righteous would be glad in the Lord and trust in you, and all the upright in heart would glory, according to Psalm 64. As they have shown no mercy, God, I pray to God they obtain no mercy, if they will not repent of their wickedness. The blood of Jesus Christ be against them. I pray to God, they're, they're, I just pray to God you open the eyes of the masses, Lord, and people understand and realize what is going on. And that they start fighting back against this wickedness. And that those that can be saved would be saved. I do pray, God, you forgive us for any and all sins we've committed as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart would be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer that you cleanse us from presumptuous sins and secret faults that they would not have dominion over us. And we ask all of this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.